Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two-player game, Curious Cargo, designed by Ryan Courtney and published by Capstone Games, who helped sponsor this video. You ever find yourself investing in a manufacturing plant where you don't really know or understand what you're producing, except you think it might have something to do with robots, but then your friend also buys one of those maybe it's a robot factory factories and ends up competing in the same market and now even though neither of you know exactly what you're making or why, you both have to keep making whatever it is as fast as possible because now you're both too far into quit? No? That's never happened to you? Well guess what? It just did. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, have each player take a matching board from the included double-sided ones that give you six different possible board layouts to choose from. For your first game, have each player pick the one with a number one here and rotate the board so that the number is closest to you. Your opponent would then sit across from you and they would put their board near yours as well, but facing them. Now each player takes one of these double-sided shipping boards and puts the side face up that just shows a blue and red line here, placing it along the bottom edge of their mat so it looks like this. Then you fill in each of the spaces in this area here with the matching colored good. What are these goods? Well, I'm not too sure, but hopefully they're not too dangerous and it should look something like this when you're done. Then each player collects five of these scaffolding tokens. I should mention that at certain points during this video, I will rotate the boards so they're laid out like this, especially when I want to show both at once. It just fits the screen a little better. But just keep in mind, no matter how they're rotated, players will always sit on opposite ends. As we continue the setup though, now you would place this turn order track nearby and have each player take a forklift in their chosen color, sending it onto this zero space. Pick one of the players to randomly be the starting player, and you show that by having them set their forklift on top. The game comes with a collection of truck tiles of different shapes and varying patterns, and I like to stack these by size within reach of both players. And also set nearby these construction and truck tokens. Now this tray doesn't come with the game, but if you'd like to get some for your own games, you'll find links in the description below. Nearby also set what are known as the square blue and red splitters. There's also two purple splitters, but those aren't used in your first game, so you can return these to the box. The game comes with all kinds of rectangular conveyor tiles, which you'll put into this bag, giving them a good shake, and then setting them aside for use later. Finally, shuffle these truck cards into a face-down deck, and then deal three of these to each player. You can always look at your own truck cards, but you should keep them a secret from the other player. If this is your first game, just keep the cards you've been dealt, but once you know how to play, instead at this point, you'd pick one card to keep, passing the other two to your opponent, who would do the same thing. They'd pick one to keep, passing the other two to you. But either way, that's the setup. In Curious Cargo, you have a manufacturing plant that is very empty, except for machines that produce, uh, we don't really know, curious red and blue things. During the game, you'll be placing these pipe pieces in your plant to connect the machines there to these loading bays along this shipping side of your plant. Now eventually, trucks will drive up along that side. And if you've made connections from your machines to a space adjacent to a truck's opening, you'll be able to move goods from your warehouse into those truck spaces. This is good because you want to ship products out of your plant. As more trucks arrive at your plant, the ones already there will be pushed forward, sometimes into your opponent's plant, where they can receive the goods on those trucks, assuming that they have connections going from the loading bays on their receiving side back into their machines. And they'll want to take your goods because, well, goods are good for helping you win the game. Meanwhile, the goods that your opponent is loading onto trucks and shipping from the other side of their plant will then be arriving at your plant so that you can potentially receive them if you have the proper connections set up. Why is any of this happening? We don't have time to answer questions like that. We've got curious cargo that needs shipping. And if you ship goods better than your opponent, you'll win. The game is played over a series of rounds and each round is made up of two phases, starting with the construction phase, where each person gets a turn starting with the first player. The first player is whoever is furthest ahead on this track, but if there is a tie like you would have at the beginning when they're both on this space, the player who is on top always goes first. On your turn, you can perform up to three actions, and there are two different types of actions you can take. 
One option is to draw a random conveyor tile from the bag into your hand. The other option is to place a conveyor tile from your hand into your plant. And you can do any combination of these two actions in any order as often as you like, so long as you don't take any more than a total of three actions. So I could draw three tiles, ending my turn, or draw two and place one, and so on. Now, drawing a tile as an action is pretty straightforward. Nothing more to explain there. But let's go back to the table and I'll explain how you place a tile once you have it in your hand. First, you take any one tile, either from your hand or from the top of the two storage stacks here. At the beginning of the game, you won't have any tiles in your storage yet, and we'll learn how these end up here later, but you can treat any on the tops of the stacks as if they're also available to place in your factory, like the tiles that you're holding in your hand. These tiles are double-sided, but you only use the sand-colored side while playing your first game. The other side is for use in an advanced variant that involves three different types of shipping goods blue, red, and purple, and we'll discuss that more later. Now the tiles that you play must be set in your factory so that they fit entirely within the spaces created by these crosses. They can never be set on top of machines, walls, numbered spaces, or other elements. They can, however, be set on top of these gear symbols. And as soon as you cover one up, you collect a gear piece from the supply, and we'll see how to use these more a little bit later. Otherwise, you really can place the tiles anywhere you like. As you add new ones, you don't have to set them next to other tiles you already have in play. You could really just put them anywhere. And the colored pipes that are adjacent to each other don't have to match colors. You'll often want them to, as we'll see, but you don't have to. You can even place a tile on top of any other tile, so long as they all lay flat. I couldn't, for example, do this, having it sort of half on this tile and half off. But each player does have five scaffolding tokens, and you can use these anytime you're adding a conveyor tile in order to prop it up so that it does lay flat. I could put this scaffolding here, and now this tile could be placed into this position because it's laying flat. However, once you run out of these tokens, you can't do this anymore, so use them wisely. The rules suggest that experienced players can both choose not to use scaffolding tiles if they want a more challenging game. Or you could just have one of the players use fewer or none in order to balance out games with players who are less experienced. But either way, once you've placed a tile into your plant, you can't move it later. Now, as we saw throughout the game, you may gain these construction gear tokens. During any construction phase, in addition to the normal three actions that you can always perform to draw and place tiles, you can also spend a single one of these, if you have one, returning it to the general supply to gain its effect. After spending a gear, you then either take two additional actions this turn, or you can place one of these square splitter tiles you own if you have one. And we'll see how to acquire these a little later. But again, you can only spend one gear token per construction phase, no matter how many you have. Now you might be wondering, why are we placing all of these conveyor tiles in the first place? Well, that's a great question. You're doing this to create what are known as active connections. An active connection is a continuous line of colored pipe that's all the same color that connects to any opening on one of your machines to any of the numbered loading docks. Now, some of these spaces here you'll never be able to reach because they're blocked by other elements in your plant. But ones that can be active will always have a conveyor belt background like we see here. To help explain this, I'm gonna set a few more tiles down on the board like you might see later in the game. For example, here we have an active red connection that goes from this machine all the way to loading dock five. And if I placed a tile here, I would have just created an active blue connection running from this machine up here to dock seven. And active connections can run from machines to either side of your plant. So this here is also an active blue connection. Coming up from this machine, we appear to have a connection that runs to dock six but you'll notice it changes from red to blue, and an active connection must be made up of only one color, so this connection does nothing. Anytime you place a tile, count how many total active connections you have, and if that value is higher than the current position of your forklift, advance it to that number on the turn order track here. For example, after adding this tile, I now have three total connections, and that means my marker goes here, and if you land on the same space as an opponent, Stack your piece on top as a reminder that you are now ahead in the turn order. 
Your forklift will never go backwards. So for example, if I later placed a tile that breaks one of my active connections, I don't move my forklift backwards. It will stay on the third space and then only advance once I have four or more connections. When you advance on this track, you also gain any bonuses represented by these white circles. The first player to go here, for example, collects one gear token, and the second player arriving here would collect two instead. Each of these spaces will show this plus symbol inside of a rectangle, and that represents getting to draw the top card of the truck deck into your hand, and these are cards that we'll discuss later. These final spaces also earn you additional points and may trigger the end of the game, as we'll see. And those are the rules for the construction phase. Now I had mentioned that players take their actions in turn order. In other words, the first player would take all three of their actions, then the next player would take all three of theirs. But the rules say players can take their actions all at the same time if they want, unless one of the players asks for turns to be taken in order. You see, most of the time, what you're doing here won't affect the other player. So it makes sense to play simultaneously because things will just go faster. But even if you're playing simultaneously, any time your number of active connections increases, you must stop and resolve that in turn order. For example, if both players made their third link, the player who is first in the turn order would arrive at the third space of the track first and receive just one gear, while the player second in turn order would then stack their forklift on top and receive two gears. Once both players have finished their turn in this phase, you perform the end of phase cleanup. First, check to see if the end of the game has been triggered, which can happen in one of four different ways. However, most of those ways won't make a lot of sense at this time. We need to learn a few more rules first, so we'll come back to that later. If an end game trigger hasn't occurred, then each player takes the conveyor tiles in their hand and places them into the two storage spaces for them here in any order, but any already in the storage cannot be rearranged. Remember, the tiles on the top can be played from storage as if they were in your hand during future construction phases. Players also check the construction or trucking tokens they may have collected, and we'll see how you earn these a little later. You can never have more than three of each, so discard any extras that you might have back to the supply. With the construction phase complete, it's now time for the trucking phase, which starts with loading and unloading cargo on and off trucks. At the beginning of the game, you won't have any trucks in play yet, so to explain how this works, I'm going to add some trucks to our factories, but don't worry, we'll actually see how trucks enter the game very soon. First, if you have an active connection running from a machine to a dock that has a truck beside it with an empty space, you move the leftmost good that matches that connection's color from this shipping area to that truck's space. Now, if you ever have no more of a particular good here, then you wouldn't move anything even if you had a connection. Also note that trucks can never have goods added to spaces with this symbol. You can consider those spaces already full. You also can never load two goods of the same type into spaces directly adjacent to each other on the same truck. So although both of these are active connections that run back to machines, I'd have to pick one of these spaces to fill with the red good, and then the other one I'd have to leave empty. As we'll see later, trucks can also end up arriving at your factory from the other side, carrying goods already on them that were shipped from your opponent's factory. If you have an active connection matching the color of the good that runs from that dock back to one of your machines, then you take it from the truck and add it to the leftmost empty space of this receiving side. If you ever completely fill in one of your receiving rows with goods, then you will not be able to receive any more of that type of good for the rest of the game. Those items will just stay on the trucks and may eventually leave the game, as we'll see later. Loading and unloading cargo is mandatory if you have an active connection and a legal place to put the resource. If you ever completely fill a truck, not counting its blocked spaces, you immediately get the bonus showing here at its front. This symbol means that you earn a construction token, while this means you gain a truck token. The symbol here means that you collect any one splitter tile from the supply, and this symbol means that you draw a conveyor tile from the bag and then add it to your hand. You also gain bonuses as shown here beneath the red line for completely emptying certain columns on your shipping side. For example, if you empty this first column completely, this symbol means you gain a truck token. If you empty the first three columns completely, you gain another one as well. 
Emptying all the way down to either of these two columns earns you additional points at the end of the game, as we'll see. On the receiving side, for each of these six spaces that you fill in, you gain the related bonus. For example, adding this cargo here will gain you a construction token, and so would adding this good. If you fill in both of these first two columns with goods, as shown down here, you also get to collect a splitter from the supply. You'll also notice some numbers written above the tracks as well, but these are earned only during endgame scoring, so we'll discuss them then. Okay, so that covers loading and unloading cargo, which again, happens for both players at the very start of each trucking phase. Then, in turn order, each player either performs one of the following three actions, or they can just choose to do nothing else this phase. One option is to play truck cards from your hand in order to add trucks to your factories. And each truck costs either one or two action points known as APs. When taking the play trucks action, you can spend up to two action points. So I could bring in both of these trucks or just this one, or only one of these if I didn't want to spend both of my action points, but any leftover points are lost. When you play a truck card this way, you resolve each one, one at a time. Now in this case, the truck I'm playing here costs two action points, so I'll only be playing a single card. And now you find the pitcher truck and then add it to either player's shipping side, and then you discard the related card from the game. When a truck arrives at a facility this way, let's say I'm gonna put it on my shipping side, you slide it upwards until its back space is next to dock number one, and you push any other trucks already there forward. If this causes any truck to have any part of it extending beyond the 10th dock, it immediately leaves the facility and enters the receiving side of their opponent's facility in the same way, sliding in until its back is adjacent to dock one there. This will also push any trucks that happen to already be there forward, and if any extend past the final space there, then those are immediately removed from the game along with their cargo. Once all that movement and shifting around is complete, you then perform any loading and unloading that could happen based on the active connections in both players' plants and the truck spaces that are available to load and unload for both of them. So just to be clear, at the beginning of the trucking phase, all trucks will load and unload. And then anytime a new truck is added to the game and the movement related to it is complete, you also load and unload cargo. And the important thing to remember about this action is that when adding a new truck by playing a card, you can add it to your facility or you can choose to add it to your opponents, which you might do in order to force one of their trucks onto your receiving side or just to mess up their plans. But again, playing a truck card is just one of the possible actions you can take in this phase. There are two other options, so let's discuss those next. If you'd rather, you can discard a single card from your hand in order to draw the number of conveyor tiles shown here from the bag. And these will go directly into your hand, but you cannot play them to your board. These you'll just have for later. And the last action you can instead take is to discard two conveyor tiles from your storage to draw a single truck card from the deck. And you can either discard one from each stack or two from the same stack. Any tiles or cards you discard are removed from the game. So again, in the trucking phase, in turn order, each player can pick to either spend two action points to play trucks from their hand or discard a truck card for conveyor tiles or discard two conveyor tiles for a truck card. Or you can just choose to do nothing. Either way, in this phase, a player can also spend a single trucking token, returning it to the supply, in order to draw one truck card. And then they can spend up to two action points to play any truck cards they're holding, but they must spend at least one. Once both players have taken their turn in the trucking phase, you perform the end of phase cleanup just like you did at the end of the construction phase. And again, remember, you first check to see if the game is over. And if it's not, you place any conveyor tiles you might be holding into your storage. Also, don't forget that if you have more than three construction or three trucking tokens in front of you, you must discard back down to three. So that covers how a round of play works. And then you start a new round. But there are two other rules we still have to go over. On the back of the rule book, you'll find a helpful summary of what you can do during both phases. 
but you'll also find this reminder of another action you can always take at any point during your turn, trading tokens. This explains that you can always trade in two construction tokens in order to gain one trucking token, and it also says that you can trade in two trucking tokens in order to gain a splitter. Splitters are handy tiles because they create connections in so many different directions. But unlike conveyor tiles, the only way to add one of these to your factory is by spending a construction token, which you're reminded of right here. And those are all the rules. The game will continue round after round, and at the end of each phase of a round, you check to see if the game has ended, which can be triggered in one of four possible ways. One way is if a player has shipped a total number of goods from here in any combination totaling this value, so nine or more goods. Another way to trigger the end of the game is for a player to reach a star, either with their forklift by getting 10 connections or by receiving the fourth good of either type, which you're reminded of by the star here over this last column. The game also ends at the end of a phase if either the draw bag or the truck deck is empty. Now it's time to determine the winner. To win, you must have shipped at least two goods of each color. If you fail to do this, you can't win. If both players fail to do this, the game just ends in a draw. However, if both players are eligible to win, then the player with the most total stars wins. There are three ways to earn stars. One way is by having your forklift here. Or for each receiving row you've completely filled, you also earn one star. If both players are tied in stars, then you break the tie by checking each player's score. Each player gains a number of points equal to the value above the rightmost empty space of each of their shipping lines. For example, here I'd get eight points for blue and nine points for red. You also gain two extra points as shown here if you cleared all of these columns or eight extra points if you cleared all of the columns. On the receiving side, you gain points or a star based on what is showing above the rightmost filled in space of each of your receiving lines. So for blue, I'd gain a star and no points, and for red, I'd gain seven. If you get your forklift to any one of these three spaces, you gain the related points showing on it, and you also gain one point for every unused splitter, construction, or truck token you have. The player with the most points wins. And if there's a tie, the player who is first on the turn order track wins. Now don't forget there are additional boards to give you a variety of factory layouts when you play, and there's also this night shift variant. This has you playing with the other side of your shipping board, which now involves a third color of goods. You'll also use the dark side of the conveyor tiles when playing, and add the purple splitters to the supply. Because of the added challenge a third type of cargo introduces, they don't recommend this variant until you're at least a little familiar with the two color version. But otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Curious Cargo. Now, if you have any questions at all about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.